support finding jewelry. That's right. Our review in this video again, as you can obviously see, I'm joined again by Chancey Bradley. Chance, how you doing, pal? Good to see you. Good, 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 good. So last night we went to the premiere of Pixar's 17th film. Can you believe that? 17th film, and it is Finding Dory, the sequel that's been you know waited for for what, 13 years now mm -hmm. since the first movie. People have been dying to see this film, and uh, here it is. Here it is. We have it. Going into it, obviously we're very excited. We have high hopes for the sequel and. What were your initial thoughts after uh, leaving the theater? It was good, but it wasn't. It wasn't like we thought we were. Th we were hoping like this is going to be a fantastic movie. This was going to be amazing, incredible. No, it was just good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it was a good movie too for for what it was supposed to it was, be. There was. It wasn't something to write home about. No, look at. I I thought that Finding Nemo that that's pretty much a classic now. You know what yeah. I mean? It's it's a phenomenal film. So going to this one, it's it's almost unfair to compare it to that, but it is the sequel, so that you kind of have to. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is obviously it's not as good as that movie. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That movie, it's 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 it's, it's been a near it's perfect. Been classified. Yeah, that film was a near perfect movie. And going into this one, you know, you're you're. I, I wasn't expecting a perfect movie. I just wanted we want, a good movie. Which we got. Which we got. We got a good film. So leaving the theater, I wasn't I wasn't disappointed because this was a little better than just okay. The plot of this movie is Dory starts getting these flashbacks of, of her parents. parents and then, you know, she goes on this adventure with Nemo and Marlon to find her parents. Where are they? And that's the story of the movie, uh, pretty much. And it's, it's simple, just like, you know, the plot of Finding Nemo was very simple. Nemo gets lost. Marlon got, you know, has to go save uh, Nemo with, with Dory. That's the adventure. But the difference with this film and that film, that film felt more open and it felt like the ocean was open this, world. This, phenomenal, this fantastically large, humongous thing. Almost, yeah. like, almost like a sandbox video game. They, they go, yeah, they go to Bruce. They, you know, in the first movie, they go to Bruce, and then they go to the, 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 the you the know, jellyfish field. The jellyfish, the, the, the turtles. Yeah, I mean, cross. Right. Then they finally get to their destination. Yeah, they in get in Australia. Right, they get eaten by a whale and everything in the first film, and that's great. You know, it's this whole big adventure film. And this one, I wasn't really expecting a rehash, but it just seems like. The, from where they get to point A to point B, it happens extremely quick, and then we spend most of the film at point B. You know what I mean? Without giving away any spoilers, which I was okay with because it had me entertained. Mm -hmm. But I just, I, I just felt like it, it, it was a little. It wasn't much of an adventure. It, it wasn't much, much of an adventure. No, it, it was just more of okay. We're, now we're in this one environment. Let's just do what we have to do. It's like a, it's just like a mission. I think that every single. Uh, character in this movie was, you know, the, the, the people that voiced these these characters mm -hmm. was phenomenal. You know, you have all your original cast members. You have Ellen DeGeneres as Dory, which is a fantastic ca casting. She's great. Uh, Albert Brooks is, is Marlon, one of my favorite characters. I think he's fantastic. And uh, then you have your whole slew of new characters. You know, you have Hank, voiced by Ed O'Neill, and you have... My favorite character. Andrew Stanton. Um, let me think. Uh, I mean, he was the original director for Finding Nemo. Um, I'm not gonna say he did a bad job because it was a good movie. No, he did a good job. He did a fine job. The animation is absolutely spectacular. It was. I mean, every single shot in this movie was beautifully animated. You know, from all the, the fish and from the humans and the, the, the vehicles that we see, and just the landscape of, of some of these set pieces, Absolutely phenomenal. I think we both agree that the pacing could have, like, you know, could have been tweaked a little bit. I th look at thinking about it. This is a like an extremely fast-paced film. It really there is. is never a dull moment. It feels like it's a half hour. It feels so. It feels extremely quick. This is this movie's paced wonderfully. But when I say that it's disjointed, is I don't really think it was a problem with the pacing. I just think they should have spent a little more time at point. A and maybe to the journey to point B mm -hmm. on that on the kind of journey maybe put another fifteen minutes onto that and then cut out fifteen minutes of point B because mm -hmm. there was some scenarios and some th some things that happen in the main setting of the film that could have been cut down or just unnecessary. I just think they could have went about it differently. The score to this film now it's composed by Thomas Newman who did the first film as well, and he also did uh, Wally for Pixar, 
And uh, personally, I think that the score was, was kind of forgettable, to be honest with you. Not, none of the newer themes really stood out to me. Like in Finding Nemo, you had the phenomenal music in that movie. I mean, it was Oscar-nominated score. In this one, I can't see the score getting nominated for an Oscar because none of the themes really stood out to me other than the original theme that they only use once. In the whole movie. I think another thing we should say is this one was emotional, but it didn't it didn't suck you in like Finding Nemo did. Yeah, there wasn't really that much of an emotional punch. Now, sure, I got the message that they were trying to convey, but I just, I, I mean, and I was emotion, emotionally invested in the characters. I cared about the characters, I cared about what was going on, but the movie didn't, it didn't pull on my heartstrings. Same here. Humor in this movie, it was it was great. Yeah, I thought this was a really funny movie. I think that's pretty much all we could you know say about the film, but no spoilers. That's pretty much our thoughts on Finding Dory. And uh, why don't you kick off your score? Uh, my score, I'm giving it a four out of five. It's a good movie. I'm, I will say that it's a good movie, but there are problems. My rating is four out of five stars uh, as well. I, I did enjoy this movie very much. Uh, I think it's a worthy sequel, and uh, other than the Toy Story films, I would say this is Pixar's best sequel underneath those movies. Uh, I liked it better than Monsters University, and I definitely liked it more than Cars 2. Uh, and I have something special planned for you guys right now. Uh, Chance needs to refresh his memory on some of these Pixar films, but I see them quite frequently, and uh, I have created a top... 17 Pixar films for you guys. I've ranked them to my worst to best, and I'm going to tell you them right now, and I'm just going to knock them out, do it quickly, my top 17. So, number 17, I have The Good Dinosaur. Okay, Number 16, I have Brave. 15 is Cars 2. 14, Wally. I have 13 at Cars. 12, Monsters University. 11, Finding Dory. 10, The Original Toy Story. 9, Up, 8, A Bug's Life, 7, Ratatouille, 6, Toy Story 2, 5, The Incredibles, 4, Inside Out, 3, Monsters, Inc., 2, Finding Nemo, and 1 is Toy Story 3. Uh, so yeah, there's my rankings, and guys, you could comment in the comment section, and let us know what are your top 10 Pixar films, if you don't want to do all 17, or if you want to do all 17, that's up to you. Also, you can subscribe to this channel for upcoming movie reviews coming out in the future. You're definitely going to be getting a review for Independence Day Resurgence. I don't know if you're going to be involved in that, but if you are, you're welcome to join. Uh, there's going to be reviews for the BFG. You'll that, probably want to be involved that in that one. In that one. Uh, there's going to be the Tarzan film coming out. I and, might be in that one, too. Right, and then definitely Finally, in August, when Suicide Squad comes out, we will be doing a non-spoiler and a spoiler review for that one. Oh, you bet. So keep your eyes open for that next month. Chance, you got any uh, social media yet for these people to follow you on uh, still? I'm going to be making a Twitter soon. Soon you're making a Twitter. Okay, so we're getting there. And uh, guys, same as always for me, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links to those are in the description of this video. And uh, you can also follow me on Snapchat at RyanKing72 and on Instagram at KingArises131. Guys, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching our review for Finding Dory. Over and out. I remembered something important. Something important? What? Something about a clam or... No. No, an oyster. No. Mollusk? No. Something? No. I don't know. No clue. No one's ceiling.